Late in the afternoon, it's a little bit nighttime. My job, Leslie, is I'm her number one fan outside of her family, so thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, she gave me a very, very tall task, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I have to keep you guys off your phones for the whole thing. It's going to be really tough, so I apologize. So here we go. I'm going to talk about my favorite subject first, myself. Here we go. A little bit about me. Born in Houston, very actively involved in the startup community there. Moved to Austin about nine years ago, still very actively involved with the startup and entrepreneur and growth communities. Uh, it's really my passion more than anything else. There's no money in it, but we'll talk about that later. Ultimately, my job is business development. Now, everybody here knows what marketing is. Everybody here knows what sales are. Business development is somewhere in the middle. BizDev is basically making connections for the purpose of meaningful business with other organizations. So I happen to work for a law firm. I work with banks. I work with accounting firms. I work with insurance brokers, kind of boring, but fun. Um, these are all the people that are targeting the same clients I am. So we work together to make sure those clients are served. So BizDev is something I take very, very, very seriously. It's something that I really love to do, but there's no textbook of it. You can't get a degree in business development. It's just one of those things you just can't know about until you're actually in it, which, by the way, is most jobs. You can get a degree in just about anything here, but you don't know how it really works until you're there. Has anybody had any internships yet? A couple interns? Okay, very good. You know what it says on the box is not what you actually do on a day to day. That's kind of how all work is. So last thing I always have to say, I work for a law firm. This is actually my third law firm I've worked for, but I've been able to dodge well. I'm not a lawyer. Um, our friend in the back, Gavin, is, and he gave it up for this work. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about professional networking. Not just parties, not just hanging out, not just happy hours, but what it actually means to be networked, and, and really why. Like, why do it? It sounds boring. It sounds kind of cringy, a little gross. Like, Talking to people about myself, not my favorite thing. Well, my favorite thing. Ultimately, we're going to talk about five different things, and it'll be really easy. First is, is simple. Give first. You're there to help them, not to help you. And if you have that mindset, no matter what you do, no matter what industry you go into, whether you become an entrepreneur, whether you work at a bank, whatever you do, if you are there to serve others, you will be served ultimately. So you got to walk in with that mindset. So first things first, and it's a little small and I apologize. Number one is be approachable. Now, that's pretty easy if you think about it, but it actually is kind of not a thing that you think about. If you walk into an event and you don't know anybody, and you're by yourself, and it's just weird, and you know, like everybody's kind of talking to each other and they have their own cliques, it's hard to kind of get integrated in the group. But if you are approachable, if you walk up to people in a, in a, in a not an aggressive way, but just saying I'm open to the conversation, they'll typically let you in because every single person at that event had that same moment of, oh my God, what if I don't know anybody when they walk in the door? So just know that and be able to help them. And I'm not going to go through every single one of these bullet points that's boring because I really want to make this a little bit more interactive than I think it's going to be. But ultimately, you have to help lead the conversation. It's really hard. You could probably tell I'm a little bit of an extrovert, yeah? Um, I am, and I, I, I'm proud of that. A lot of people are not, a lot of people want to be introverts and say they're introverts. I zig when everybody else that. I'm an extrovert extrovert. What that means, though, is I help with the conversation. Everybody's a little weird and quirky and funky, and you just kind of want to ease them into it. Ask them basic things. How are you? What's your family? Where are you from? Nobody from Austin is from Austin, so everybody has a place. Everybody's got an origin story, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. But ultimately, and this is, everything's going to be mostly positive, but there are a couple negatives. I can't imagine you would do this, but I've experienced this. Keep the conversation light. You don't want to talk about politics if you're not a political rally. You don't want to talk about religion if you're not at a religious ceremony. Don't talk about anything that's terribly controversial, unless you're close friends. But at a networking event, this is about getting to know each other and professional connections. It's not about how you feel or what cause you believe that the world needs to know about. Now, I'm not saying hide your feelings. I'm not saying dampen down what you believe in. But there is a place for certain conversations and a place for not. At a business networking event, let's just call this a business networking event, we're here to do business. And then, and this is something that's hard for me, you got to let them go. 
I like to pigeonhole people and talk to them for the whole night, but they don't want to talk to me all night. They want to talk to everybody else. So you got to have a, a way to say, move on, go do a lap, talk to somebody else. It's really okay. All right, so first is give first, have that mentality. But then the trick to all networking, this is it. This is the only thing you need to take away from this whole event, is just be interested, just care. If you care about somebody, you care about their life, you care about what their problems are, you care about their business, they know it and they feel it. And if you show that you care about them, then they'll care about you. So to be interesting, you have to be interested. You've got to care about what they want. And that's sort of the top level here. But ultimately, what you're really asking for is how can you be helpful to them? And if you don't know anything about them, you're just kind of a generic saying, I'm here to help, but what does that mean? So I'm a real big believer in listening first, even though I'm obviously a talker. So you have to be interested in them first, so you can be interesting to them. And everybody, everybody on earth loves the sound of their own name. So if you repeat your name to them, hey, how are you, nice to meet you, what's your name? Say it back to me, they love to hear it. The only thing people like to hear more than the sound of their own name is the sound of their children's names. Just a weird thing that I've learned. But ultimately, when you're at an event like this, you're there for your business. You're there to say, I need to go sell something, whatever that service might be. But in the world that I'm in, I don't sell my services. I tell stories. I listen to stories. Because if I'm just there to sell, then they can pick up the phone or pick up the They can go to the website and sell. But that's not why they're at an event like that. That's not why they show up to something like this. They come to learn about people and people help people they care about and they know about. And people buy from people emotionally, not logically. It's not about price, it's not about service, it's not about features, it's about, is this thing that I'm buying from this person trustworthy enough for me to put my own money down? That's really the essence of sales. So the one thing that I tell you is don't sell yourself, don't like rah, rah, um, this is the greatest thing in the world. Only thing that works in the world is this thing that I'm selling. That's boring, not fun. Everybody's been in this. Everybody's gone to the store, and the retail girl walks around and follows you every single time because she gets a commission. You feel that, and nobody wants that. So I do say don't sell, but tell. But I also say have an ask. What's your ask? An ask is I'm looking for a job, an internship. I'm looking for a a connection to help me sell more. I'm looking for certain things, but if you have an ask, it makes it a lot easier for somebody to help you. If you meet somebody and you really like them and they're great and we have a great time, but I don't know how to help you, then I kind of put you on the bottom of the list. If somebody says, hey, Mark, I can you help me with this one thing? If I can, I'll do it right now. If I can't, I'll probably ignore it. But ultimately, you need to be able to tell people what you need, and that's really hard, especially at the beginning of your career, because you don't know yet. And once you figure it out, then you'll have that very crisp ask and that's very important. This is so obvious and so easy. And every single person in this room has done it because you're not skipping this class. You showed up. You got here. Nine times out of 10, networking is just about who's in the room. And whoever is in that room intentionally is supposed to be in that room. And I find that really fascinating because I do a lot of connections, a lot of networking, a lot of events. But everybody has a different flavor, just like every party you've ever been to is a different party. Same people, same stuff going on, but it feels different because of where it is and how it is and all that. That's what networking is like. Uh, don't tell any of your parents this, but you can make up a test, you can't make up a networking event. So ultimately, I feel it's important to be very upfront and present. Um, you ever been to a room or a party where somebody's on their phone the whole time, they're ignoring you, they're not really, scared, they're not really there? Well, if they're not really there, okay, it's a lot easier to just stay home. Nobody is going to an event like this and getting dressed and driving and going through traffic and parking and going to an event just to have somebody ignoring them. So if you go to anything, this is really true in life, just be there and be there for the reasons that they're supposed to be there. And that's actually not difficult, but a lot of people just turn it off because everybody's just kind of head down, doing their job, doing their thing. Um, this one right here, the middle one, take up space, that's the one I really want to talk about. This one I'm actually pretty proud of. This is what I tell my daughters. <sighs> Taking up space basically means that you're valuable, you have meaning, and you should be in an event. 
Don't be a wallflower. I'm not saying don't be introverted. I'm not saying change your personality. I'm saying make your presence known. And if you take up space, I mean physically, put your shoulders back, put your legs, you know, shoulder width apart, and just take up space and plant yourself, then you would be surprised how many people approach you. And I know I'm a, like a dad and a male and all that, I get that, but I'm telling this is what I tell my girls, and they've taken it to heart a little bit, and it works. So make sure that you're present and that you're there and you're anchoring yourself in a place where people can approach you. Um, the be where you're supposed to be goes back to just showing up. It just means that take advantage of opportunities like this, of every internship you can get your hands on, every program that comes to school. You can't know this because you're students. But this is the very richest, most fertile opportunity to meet more interesting people. You're smiling because you know. You, don't, you can't appreciate it, but I'm telling you to try to appreciate it. And the last thing is follow up quickly and decisively. If the follow up is there's no follow up, don't push it. Just say, okay, nice to meet you, see you later. If the follow up is you ask me about a job, you ask me about a business idea, you ask me about a connection, do that as fast as possible. It's a little bit like writing thank you cards. If you don't do it, you look really bad and it makes you look like somebody you don't want to be around. So I have a quick way. I, I really want to get through this part. Part That's why I'm speaking so fast, because I really want to hear from you. I have a real problem with how people make email introductions. And I'm not the only one. Email introductions is something I personally do every day. And it really is very basic. Hi, how are you? You should meet that person. Here's the email. A lot of people don't know how to do it. Uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, Chris Palmasano, and I wrote a blog post about how to actually tactically do it because we were so sick and tired of people doing it wrong. Um, ultimately, it's just about making things easy for the people you're introducing and giving them the reason why we call it a double opt-in is because you ask both people if it's okay. If you just make an introduction that you don't ask and somebody says, I'm busy, I want to talk to you, whatever, they look bad, you look bad, and the person feels snubbed. So there's a very delicate art to this. We don't have to get into all the details. But I will tell you a quick story. I was uh, just moved back to Austin about eight years ago. And I was meeting with an old friend of mine who had a pharmaceutical company. And just talking to him and talking about what he was working on. I thought it was super cool. And I said, oh, you should meet this other person who's doing something similar. So without thinking, I just said, oh, so-and-so, you need to meet this person. And I got that the single worst email of my entire life about four hours later. Mark, how dare you introduce me to a competitor? I'm busy. I don't have time for this. You should have asked. And I was mortified. It was, it was I felt like I'd caught in a hole. Not because I did anything that was criminal or bad, but I wasted somebody's time. And that's the last thing you ever want to do. You want to be helpful, and in my case, I was actually hurtful because I didn't ask. So you could probably tell I'm a double ask for that. Um, one thing that especially my friends who are, let's say, let's make it easy. Let's say they're below 30 years old. They forget that phone numbers matter. Um, I'm not saying that uh, you have to talk on the phone or pick up every no caller ID phone call you ever get, but in the business world, people still want to talk to you. And so in an email signature, I really do prefer to send a phone number. I know it sounds like a little quirky, stupid thing. It doesn't really matter. But I found most of the business connections that I've made are typically after a couple of emails or text back and forth, it's on the phone. So don't make me dig for your phone number is basically what I'm saying. And if you're uncomfortable putting your phone number out in the world, totally reasonable, get a Google Voice number or a burner number. And they're out there and they're free and they're easy. And you don't get a headache, or you don't, or you don't get the headaches of like spam calls and often just go to your voicemail. But I'm a big believer in talking. Um, this is really the gist of it, and there's one here that's missing. Um, there's a handful of events local here to Austin that everybody here in this room could go to and should go to, and I'm going to encourage it. There's a handful that are general business. The UC Entrepreneur Network, it, it fascinates me. I talked to a friend of mine who got hired here a few months ago, and her job is to measure and manage all of the different entrepreneur programs here. She's so far counted 48 in Austin alone. I know you're, obviously this is a big one here, 
but there are 48 separate ones. That includes the business school, it includes the engineering school, all the different weird little schools we never hear about or talk about have an entrepreneurship program. But that's just one opportunity for everybody in this room to go to. There's a few others, I don't know if anybody's heard of Fiesta, but I'm gonna only mention this because I love the acronym. Fiesta is founder, investor, entrepreneur, startup, technologist, and the A is my is the kicker. Austin newcomer. They, they squeeze that one in, I really like. This is a monthly networking event that gets about 200 people, mostly early stage technology-based startups, and they just get together and talk and hang out and get a couple of pitches in and just sort of meet and greet. Uh, Open Coffee Club and Wake Up CPG, I'm very proud of because that's mine. I've been hosting this since 2007. As a matter of fact, if anybody wants to come, I'll give you the details. We're actually doing an Open Coffee Club tomorrow morning downtown. Ultimately, it is just a very casual bar tab, but instead of alcohol, we just pay for the coffee. And when people get coffee, they come out and hang out and talk and chat and talk for about an hour and a half. And everybody goes off and does their job. And we do it every two weeks because having that cycle of discussion, having the ability to bring newcomers in, having the understanding of what people need and what they're doing and over time is really valuable. And so there's a few others that I'm sure you know, but I'm going to leave you one last one. This one, the boardwalks. People in the back probably can't see it. I went to my first boardwalks last Saturday. I was absolutely head over heels in love. There's a woman here who works for Meta for Facebook and realized back about a year and a half ago during probably the last bit of COVID that she wanted to get out and meet people, but she wanted to be healthy, she wanted to be able to, she wanted to be a little bit more active. So she basically sent out a tweet and got a bunch of people to show up to a coffee shop right near Lady Bird Lake on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. And they walked the lake five miles. They had great conversations. They split apart. And it turns out she's done her 56th or 57th. So a little over a year of doing this. And I went for the first time. I will be back every single time I can, except for this weekend because I'm going to ACL. But, <laughs> but ultimately, I was shocked, and it's called theboardwalks.com. And she's not advertising it, she's not promoting it. It's, uh, I was very happy to see it. it was about 60, 40 women to men. And the conversations were phenomenal. They were all over the place. They were, they're not like business conversations, they were life conversations in a business setting. It was a lot of fun. Um, but there's lots and lots of calendars and lists and places to go if you're interested in doing this kind of thing. And you can sort of call me. Um, we're going to burn through these because they're probably pretty easy and obvious, but I'm going to do it anyway. I always say this, it's not, a, it's not an event without a name tag. If it's no name tag, it's a gathering. This doesn't count as a class, but events need name tags, and I put my hand here because the name tag goes on the right. It's just an etiquette thing. And the reason why is so when people shake your right hand, they see their name tag instead of on the left hand. So that's just a, like an Emily Post thing that you have to know about. So that's number one. Number two, and I left it in my bag, but I don't leave a room without carrying my notepad. You guys are very, very lucky. You can have backpacks and purses and pouches and all that. I have a back pocket. Luckily, it's a pretty big back pocket because I'm big. But a little notepad goes a long way. And I take notes no matter what because the art of taking notes, when you write something down, you remember it better. And if you don't remember, what's the point of going anyway? So uh, I rarely actually look at the notes after, but I always write them down, which is kind of a funny thing. Um, I don't want to get down on anybody yet, because you're not graduated, it's okay, but everybody must have a LinkedIn profile, at least today in 2023. Maybe next year, the year after, something's gonna come after it and just blow it away. I pray for it, it's not gonna happen. LinkedIn is the only thing that you need from a profile perspective, and I want to point out one quick thing. If you go to a LinkedIn search, if anybody has an account, there's a little four button um, icon there, and it turns on the QR code. It's a life changer. It makes it super easy instead of typing in and doing text and all that. It's got a built-in QR code. It's not perfect. It actually kind of stinks, but it's better than nothing. So that's, that's one technical tool. I mean, I strongly encourage everybody here to have one by the time they graduate, if they don't have it already. Uh, and your contact list. This seems like a very basic thing. You have your contact list in your phone, and you have it in your maybe your Gmail, but look at it every once in a while and clean it up, because even right now, people are meeting in classes and dorms and just around. Those are people you will actually see for the rest of your life. They'll come in and out, 
But if you keep up with them, you keep their contacts at least fresh and clean, and you know what city they're in, you know what job they have, not for everybody, but I live and die by my contacts. Nobody calls me for my good looks. They call me because of people I know. So I keep my contacts very, very um, I want to hear about all of your networking problems and issues. I know we're doing a really cool exercise. I heard about that we're going to be doing some one-on-one -on -one networking. Um, but I hope you can tell that I really enjoy this subject. I'm happy to answer anything. But the one thing I can promise you is I'm not going to give you any advice. I learned that a long time ago. My advice doesn't mean anything. My advice is about as useful as getting it from your big brother. But I will give you my opinion. And my opinion only matters because I make it matter because I'm in this world all day long. So with that, I really appreciate it.